and uh, welcome to the participants who did not uh, take part in the first session during the morning. I guess you can see my, my screen here. Yes. Good. Yeah. So uh, the agenda of session two, the afternoon session, we will have uh, some some welcoming words by myself, and uh, then Ronald Arvidsson from SDU is going to speak about 3D modeling, and then we have representations from the uh, mines of the XMine project, four mines, and Azaral Medet has the has the long <clears throat> longest time for presentations because this is uh, partly their um, industrial workshop, and. Uh, then Ismo Rohamaki from VTT will tell about the exploitation of the XMind results and the, the impact analysis of, uh, of the XMind results. And uh, then at the very end of uh, this session, we will have an expert panel discussion where we have uh, several experts from the mining industry commenting the XMind results and the, uh, the impact of those results to the mining industry. And uh, we will close this session soon after 4, 4 p.m. Just a, a little bit of a recap of uh, the XMind project and uh, for those uh, who just joined uh, for this session, it's good to go very briefly through the XMind project. So the XMind is an Horizon 2020 funded uh, project with a duration of 45 months. Uh, it will end uh, at the end of August this, this year, so within a couple of months. We have 15 partners in nine uh, countries, and the big thing of the XMI project is large-scale demonstration of new sensing methods at uh, four particip participating mines. Uh, what we are demonstrating smart exploration, selective drilling, and optimal extraction. And uh, this is a uh, XMine in a nutshell. So we have sensor development, and the sensors have been integrated into a drill core scanner prototype and to a mineral sorting prototype. And then those prototypes and uh, the 3D geo modeling part are demonstrated together at the four participating mines. And uh, what we are uh, demonstrating. Uh, First prototype is a drill core scanner, and that has uh, a connection to the 3D modeling. So we have the drill core scanner here, and the scanning is done uh, partly manually. You have to feed the cores into this uh, drill core scanner, and then you, uh, it analyzes or, or measures the data from the cores. And uh, then you have the drill core analysis uh, with a dedicated software. And uh, then after doing well correlation, uh, you can feed the data into the uh, 3D geomodeling software packages. And uh, we will hear a little bit more about that in Ronald Arvidsson's presentation. And uh, this means new methodology for drill core analysis and 3D modeling. And uh, in the future, we believe that uh, this will lead to new workflows for the geologists working in exploration or uh, at the mines. Uh, second demonstration is the mineral sorting. Uh, so we have the container-based uh, sorting system, and we heard in the morning session a lot of details about that. Uh, and uh, what it does, it simply sorts the rocks into ore and to waste. And uh, here it's being dem demonstrated that the Hellas Gold mine, actually that demonstration has al already ended, but this is a photo from that de demonstration. And uh, the pilots, the four mines are located in Sweden, in uh, Greece, in Bulgaria, and in, in Cyprus. Uh, the first pilot is at Lovisa Gruvan, and uh, there the drill core scanning pilot has already been completed. Miller sorting pilot is still, still ongoing. Uh, second pilot at Hellasgold in Greece. Um, 
real core scanning pilot and the mineral sorting pilot both have been completed there, but uh, so we are in an analysis and reporting phase there. As well, minute pilot in Bulgaria, both pilots uh, completed there, and there we are also in the analysis and reporting phase. And uh, last but not least, selling copper mines, uh, there we only have the real core scanning pilot, no sorting pilot there, and it's still a little bit ongoing, but uh, the reporting has already also been started there, and this uh, is ongoing. And uh, for this session two, we have many speakers. The first one will be uh, Ronald Arvidsson, who works as, as a senior geophysicist for SGU in Sweden. And then we have Desislav Ivanov, a geologist at Asara Medet in Bulgaria, and Vencislav Stoilov, mineralogist in the same company in Bulgaria. And uh, then Jan-Erik Björklund, CEO of Logisa Gruvan in Sweden, and also Matthias Fenlöf uh, from Logisa Gruvan. And more speakers, uh, Sofia Kalampaliki from, from Hellas Gold, she works as a geologist there, and Vasilios Klepkos, who is a production engineer at Hellas Gold. And then we have uh, Georgios Kalogeropoulos, uh, I'm sorry, there, there might be a small spelling error there, but uh, I see Mr. Kalogeropoulos is the CEO of Helene Copper Mines in Cyprus. And uh, then we have Isma Rohamäki from VTT as a senior scientist. And uh, let's start with uh, Ronald Arvidsson's presentation about 3D modeling in the XMI project. Ronald, please. Uh, thank you. See if this, yep. Uh, can you see my screen now? The screen is coming up, but we see your working mode yet. Yep, okay. Uh, then we, let's get started here then. Uh, sorry. Now it's in full screen, thank you. Yep, uh, I will talk about our deposit 3D modeling in terms of uh, using the scanner and it will be this can be seen as an introduction to the mines presentation. Uh, so to begin with, we had a huge crew. Uh, only here, there are almost 40 people. There are actually more than 40 people involved in this work. So I would like to thank everyone, and including you, Janne, for uh, facilitating and making this possible for a fantastic collaboration. And uh, from my side, I, uh, Nikos Arvanetil should not be forgotten. And we've got Stefan Lut, Edvard Lynch, and Edine Backer, that's been the main contributors. But we have lo loads of other people, and the mines will be presenting themselves later on. Uh, what has been challenging and interesting, uh, and I think good for the development of the scanner, has been that we have four different environments of the rock. To begin with, we have the almost two billion year old uh, uh, suite of uh, rocks uh, at the Lovisa Gruvan, that is a uh, VMS deposit, uh, sulfide, uh, which uh, uh, is small, it's also a small scale mine with very high grade. Uh, going further south, we have the Hazarel Medet, uh, porphyry copper deposit, which is uh, low grade and uh, has a quite different suite of rocks. And it's also formed um, uh, all less than about uh, 100 to 200 million years ago. Further south is the Hellas Gold, the Mavris Petrus deposit, also VMS deposit, but also much younger. And these both also display some uh, uh, alteration due to the climate that is much warmer than in the north. Uh, further going south, we have then the Hellenic copper mines, the typical Cyprus deposit, which is a surface altered VMS deposit, which uh, shows strong influence of uh, erosional effects and uh, alteration, making it challenging to scan, but also 
once we have gotten it adapted, gives a huge feedback into improvement of the scanning. Uh, with this said, the, uh, we, we of course have a loop here that we can go from exploration to in mine exploration once the mine is established and then uh, uh, one will also get ore models and then uh, there's a feedback going back to the exploration as well as improvement of the mine model which is continuous work ongoing. Uh, we started off with uh, modeling the general geology and the, in 3D around the mines uh, which was then used as the basis for going on to feed the scanner information into. Uh, uh, to begin with here, uh, Hellas Gold, we got a fantastic amount of good information that was the build, models was built and around that eight oriented drill holes and the pilot was uh, done. Uh, orientation drill course is necessary if we should be able to use structures in a geological sense to be, put it into building the models. So I will show an example here, what one can do. This is, a, this is not the production model, I would like to point out, but here we have modeled the, first of all, taking out the information from the drill core, where we do have the um, mineralized zones uh, and utilizing the structures within it and putting it into, this case, leapfrog. So this is uh, just to showcase how to introduce the, the, the both structures as well as uh, scanning information. Uh, for going to Sweden, we have two other cases I would like to showcase here. One is that how we can utilize the lithologies that we determine from the scanning together with structures, but we also utilize, of course, as all uh, earth scientists do, all available information in order to model in better detail the 3D structures around the mine, which is are important for exploration purposes. Uh, into the mine, here we have the really small scale uh, uh, modeling that we, through use, utilizing production, no, in uh, mine exploration modeling, we could get a very well detailed picture of how the ore forming minerals were uh, concentrated and uh, their boundaries. Uh, going to uh, Cyprus then, uh, we will jump into another type of modeling. Here we do, do we do, did have some information regarding the, the resource, which we have put in here. And also uh, we, do, we did have interpretations of the structures and the interpretations of the structures. They were hugely guided by also uh, field work, but uh, scanning. And here we will see uh, from the surface top that uh, we have uh, utilized some of the elements that we, we want to look for when we uh, explore for the uh, uh, for, for the copper that is the focus of this particular part of the deposit. Uh, there we got selenium, molybdenum and strontium and uh, we can see the particular selenium and molybdenum outline center, central parts of the deposit whereas strontium is also observed at the outskirts or outside. Further is that the scanning indicate that in the north here, we might have an extension of the deposit, which was not previously known because there was not uh, very little drilling information. And that uh, together with the uh, fault interpretations, because it's the faults that initially guided the hydrothermal fluids that formed the deposit. Next, and then, but, not last, which is the focus of this part, is actually the Azarel Medet deposit, through which we have four pilot drill holes. And uh, the information here, here we see a detailed ore model where the uh, four drill holes went into. 
And here it's expiration model for further driving the uh, extraction in the SRL med deposit, which this is now will talk in more detail later. Uh, I will just show this picture, which we showed here before earlier, is that uh, looking at the second column here, we have the copper concentration that is compared to the ordinary uh, assaying, which is done by powder X, XRF. So we can see here that the correlation is rather nice between the egg scanned data and the or conventional assay. On the right, uh, I will repeat what was said in the morning is that the gold assaying, it's again a gold here is not scanned, but we are want to see how we can utilize this scanner for gold uh, from two purposes. One, if the scanner can be developed into seeing the gold directly. Secondly, we want to have also the option to explore for it with the indirect methods of understanding where the gold can be in a deposit by means of uh, trace elements, by means of structures. And here is a comparison of the density of uh, mineral forming veins that the, the scanner has revealed. So, and that the correlation is rather good with the gold assay. So yes, we can use this in order to pinpoint where the gold might be in the, be found. Uh, further is that the silver is, can also be used because silver is also, the scanner can find that silver in many deposits is also correlated as well as silica uh, with the mo most recent development in the scanner, silica can now be found. And of course, this feeds into SRL's uh, 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 model. So this is a test by uh, the, our colleague Desislav that we'll talk more in detail about this later. Uh, with this short introduction, I would like to say thank you to all who have participated in this and for details, you can come back to us or some of my colleagues directly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ronald. Um, uh, one question to you. We have a, a little bit of time yet. Uh, a lot of raw data has been collected now with totally new instrumentation. Uh, how has it worked to incorporate these new data into existing software, and in four different countries with different culture and working working habits. How has that worked? Uh, I would say that we the data is in such a form that has, it has been possible to put into the different types of software. So we have so far, I don't remember all of the, uh, but first of all, LeapFrog, it goes into, it goes into, uh, yeah, uh, I don't remember exactly, but there are a number of different types of softwares that are used for uh, for model building of the resource. And uh, it has gone into it and it seems to be working fair, rather well. Uh, same thing, it goes with other data. So that is, of course, normal uh, procedures, how we get it in. But uh, I would say it worked extremely well, considering the complexity of all of the different participants. Being mm. into it. Very good. Thank you. Um, and you have made a good introduction now to the next group of speakers, being from Asarel Medet, who will talk more about some of the results that you you put your finger on here. Uh, so thank you very much, Ronald. And to, to the audience, if you have questions, please put them in the chat and we will collect your questions for later. Either we'll deal with them directly in the meeting or we post answers on the home page afterwards. So for now, thank you very much, Ronald. Thank you. Thank you. And our next speaker is Desislav Ivanov of Asar El Medet. And Desislav, are you ready to get started? I see you coming up there. Welcome. <laughs> yes, thank you. It's a bit blocky, but I can clearly see you. Um, 
So you will have two presentations and the first one is a company presentation and then you'll talk more about the use of the drill core scanner at SRL Medet. And you have about 10 minutes for the first presentation. So welcome, get started. Yes, thank you very much, Stefan. I'm Dislav Ivanov uh, and I'm working like a senior geologist at SRL Medet. I'm working here for 10 years. I like a geologist and I now I will uh, present uh, my first uh, presentation uh, the company presentation first of uh, all um, I would like to to show uh, a small video and here you are Thank you for watching. Uh, I will continue with my presentation. Asayo Medet is a major factor for both the social and, and economic development and the uh, image of the municipality of Panagurishti and um, district of um, Pazarjik. The company has a fundamental significance and unique place in Bulgarian economy with its uh, substantial contribution to the country's uh, GDP. Since it's uh, established in 1964, the company has been traditionally a pioneer in the, in, in the industry in terms of new equipment and technologies implementation. Uh, it, ha it has always been a paragon for, uh, for high corporate, corporate culture. Our slogan, uh, from the nature to people and from the people to nature, is a representative of the profound understanding about the indestructible and crucial relation re relationship between humans and nature. Our company's motto, to start first means to be on time, reflects the modern concept of an innovative company. The company has, has a crucial contribution to the development of Panagurishti municipality. As Real Medet provides more than 70% of the revenues from local taxes and fees, and more than 30% of all revenues in the budget of Panagurishti municipality. More than 60% of the cash incomes of the, of the population in the municipality without considering the revenues from shareholder dividends. More than 30% of the occupied jobs in the municipality business sector plus another 6,400 jobs in the, in the municipality and the country servicing the company. We invest in seven corporate programs for sustainable development more than, and, and more than 
650 million euro in are invested from 1999 to 2020. 38 million euro are new is the new investment for 2020. Our face is the modern face of Bulgarian oil mineral industry. We are working with uh, uh, with highly productive mining trans transportation equipment. We are using the biggest in the world uh, 17 cubic meter caterpillar wheel loader manufactured in the USA, and the, and the biggest in the world seven, 17 cubic meter leap here electric shovels from germany for for trucks we are using the belarusian belas the first in the northern hemisphere 160 cubic meter wemco great britain flotation sales of the latest generation a high speed mp 800 cone crusher manufactured by metsu minerals this is again a part of the modern phase of of the Bulgarian oil mineral industry. Very high investment in the newest technologies, the most modern facility in Europe, and uh, the first in Bulgaria is our copper solvent extraction and electrowinning. Environment responsibility is is another one phase of uh, of of us uh, 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 this is um, our care for the nature the company has it has at its disposal treat treatment plants for mining waters for drainage waters and for waste domestic waters of course, zero deviations from the individual emission restrictions for environmental protection. Our care for the night for the nature on the photo, you can see technical and biological rehabilitation of the operational facility and planted lavender areas, the, the leach dump. On on next photo are the lavender plant plantations which are grown with a biological production certificate in a close proximity to the Azarel mine. Our social uh, respons responsibility. The first in the country complex, um, sorry, uh, 1,200 workers Specialists and managers are working in the mine. Another 100 and uh, 1,100 people work in affiliate and joint venture companies and public and public-private partnership. Strong social cooperation with l labor unions, additional remun remunerations and social benefits as stip stipulated in the collective employment contract. According to, to a poll conducted by the Bulgarian Industrial Association, Asreo Medet is the most preferred employer in the Bulgarian mining industry due, due to the high payment, occupational conditions, and social benefits. Very big support to the hometown. The, the company and its shareholders are traditional in the biggest and the biggest contributor to Panagurishti municipality, supporting significant infrastructure, healthcare, education, culture, social activities, sport, tourism, and development projects. Some of the of our investments in, in the hometown, the donation for building a treasure hall for the golden treasure of Panagurishti and the annual hosting of its or, original at the Museum of History in Panagurishti attract thousands of tourists every year. Investment in tourism in Panagurishti. On the pictures, you can see the renovated miners' home, Kamingrad, 
hotel and spa offers to its visitors a complex of conference rooms and an indoor swimming pool and spa center with mineral water. In investment in the sport, Arena Sarel multifunctional sports half of 2000 seats was built in, in 2015. Tens of competitions, concerts, and other events already took place in it. We also fund the sport clubs in Panagurishte. Unique fountain, fountain near the sport um, jewelry of Panagurishte. Investment in healthcare, a public private partnership with Panagurishte municipality for, for renovating the old municipal hospital. Nowadays, this is the biggest private investment in Bulgarian healthcare, amounting to more than 100, amount than, to, to more than 60 million euro in the latest 25 years. It has unique medical equip, equipment for the country and Southeast Europe. 670 medical and other specialists are working in the hospital. Investment in the in the education, Fol following the initiative of Asarel Medet, a pilot project for du dual education started in in the professional high school in P in Panagurishte in the year 2014. I'm proud of my parents' labor. D this is a tra traditional in in initiative of Asarel Medet under UN Global Compact Bulgaria Network project. Thank you for your attention for our company presentation. Thank you, Desislav. It's um, quite easy to understand how important uh, the company is for the local and regional community and for Bulgaria. Thank you for that background. Um, now you have one more presentation where you talk about how you have used the drill core scanner in your operation. So please, you're welcome to continue present. Okay, thank you, Stefan. Now I'm going to uh, present my next uh, presentation, um, the drill core scanner pilot at Asereo Medet. Before that, we produce a video and I would like to share with you that video. Okay, I'm continuing with my presentation. 
The project budget included funds for uh, drilling in each of the mines. At the end of uh, 2009, a drilling campaign was carried out on the territory of um, the Sarel open pit. Four drill holes with a length of 260 meters or more than 1,000 meters in total length were drilled in the high copper grade zone of our pit. The first routine scan was performed on 12th of October last year. The procedures after drilling were logging, scanning, splitting the core, preparation the samples, and, an, and analysis of the results. From the four drill holes, one was sent to Ore Explore um, in Sweden, and the other three were locked in Acerel core shed by the, by the geology team by our geology team. Again, from the four drill holes, one was scanned at Ore Explore in Sweden, and um, uh, the other three were scanned in Acerel core shed by, by our geology team. The drill core scanner pilot at Acerel Medet allows the drill core to be oriented, ori oriented during scanning. Scanning and orientation during drilling are closely, closely related because both actions are determined by the integri integrity of the drill core, how strong it is and how consistent the drill core is. Of course, this is related to the host rocks and whether it imposed hydrothermal changes. After all possible intervals of drill core were scanned, it had to be halved. For this purpose, Acerel's geologists used the latest generation of core cutting equipment, which is located in the newly built core shed where the core scanner was located. The cutting of the drill core was necessary because one of the main goals was to compare the results between the core scanner and assay data from XRF lab. Sequence of actions such as taking the drill core from drilling trays, placing the samples in special cartridges. You can see the cartridges on the picture here. And after that, placing those cartridges in the, in the splitting machine. After splitting the drill core, samples are prepared, which go to XRF and Acerel's chemical labor laboratory. On the pictures, you can see the splitted core in, in the cartridges the bags that are going to our XRF and chemical labs and the, the other half of the core back to, to the boxes to, uh, for archiving it. And if it's needed for other analysis afterwards. In the photo on the left, I'm indicating uh, a, a, a Halco Pirate vein. Knowing the direction and, and angle of sinking of the drill hole can be estimated the direction and angle of sinking of the Halco Pirate vein. On the tomographic images, I have shown two separate sections of, of the Halco Pirate vein. The small red line here and here is the mark for the orientation of the drill core.
the orientation of the drill core is, uh, is an easy possibility in the software for the drill core scanner. The software allows for, for very detailed images that carry even more detailed geological and engineered geological information. The, the distribution of minerals provides valuable information about the geomet geometallurgical model of the deposit. After the ge geological interpretation and obtaining the data from the laboratories, we started 3D block modeling. In the image, you can see the drill holes from the project located in the eastern part of the pit with elevation 675 meters. The bottom, the bottom of the pit now is 600 meters. By using search, estimating, and variographic parameters, we build different geological block models with which we compared the distribution of the individual elements and calculated the confirmation of the results obtained by the drill core scanner compared to the results of our XRF lab. Although this is a pilot program and there will still be interest in developing, developing it in more precision details, good validity has been proven for the elements we are interested in and researched. The confirmation of copper grade is about 75%, iron grade is about 57%, and sulfur grade is about 72%. This is a great start to alt alternative methods for studying the elemental grade in the core. Currently, confirmation does not allow estimation of reserves and resources, but it certainly gives a magnificent assessment of the existence and distribution of the most important minerals, respectively elements in the world. The X-Mine project, and in particular, the drill core scanner gave us the opportunity for very detailed research, which led, leads us to think that alternative methods of analysis will have beneficial impact to the human, time, economic, society, and development factors. And of course, the most important for mining industry, environmental factor. I would like to say thanks to all my colleagues that I, that I was working in the past almost four years. And I would like to say special thanks to VTT, to Orexplore, to SGU, to our colleagues from the, the Geological Institute in Romania, and of course, the University of Uppsala. Very exciting and, and very interesting for me was was that collaboration with them thank you very much thank you very much this is a very good presentation here thank you um i'd like to ask you a question uh, almost the same question as i asked to ronald before um bulgaria is has been at least for me a, a country that i haven't really experienced in the mining industry so much but obviously you have a a big operation running down there uh, so from your perspective has it been how has it been to get in touch with new instrumentation and perhaps different standards um, and to implement that in your working progress work process sorry 
Yeah. The scan with the analyzer at this stage of development is currently not, not fully comparable with the results of the XRF laboratory. The methods are kind of different, but the, the distribution of the elements is very important part. In, in our case, from, from the results that we have, it seems that we will use the, the results qualitatively, but, but the quantitative distribution give us a clear sign of the presence of useful, of useful components that bring us income. Density information is very useful because in the mining industry, the ultimate goal is the tonnage of the mineral. The difference in density between the waste and the ore and the analysis of this in real time makes it possible to calculate the mining mass after the drilling and scanning. If we, if we decide to, 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 to make a new campaign for exploratory drilling to study deep mineralization in our deposit, the scanner can allow us to decide in real time when to stop drilling, when we see that, that we have passed the mineralization or in other cases that we, that, that we, we are uh, going through an or determining fault. Mm. Very good, thank you, Desislav. Um, I will remind all the audience now that you have the chance to ask questions, and if you type them into the chat, we will take them to the presenters, and you'll get your answers either directly or afterwards in in uh, on our homepage. So for now, thank you very much, Desislav, and I think your colleague is now preparing to make his presentation. Venceslav, uh, are you with us? And you're going to talk about how the implementation of the Xmine COMEX sorting plant has worked at SRL. Yes, I'm waiting impatiently. Can you hear yeah. me? I can hear you. I don't have a presentation yet on the screen. But you're welcome to start sharing. What about now? Nothing yet, but uh, it normally takes a few seconds for it to come up. But I don't see anything yet. Nothing coming up yet. So, yeah. What about now? Now it's coming up. I can see your PowerPoint presentation in working mode. So if you change to full screen presentation, we should be all right to go. What yep. about now? Now it's coming. Yeah, you're welcome to start presentation. Thanks a lot. Uh, my name is Venceslav Stuyulf and I'm a mineralogist of Ahmedet here in Bulgaria. In this presentation, I will describe uh, the mobile sorter pilot depo deployment at the Sarah included Madet, included, including installation, processing, and primary results. Also, I'll try to give some general conclusion based on the experiments. The sorter arrived uh, in SRL in the middle of February this year, loaded into trucks, um, and uh, we successfully unloaded it by 50 ton growth crane and placed it uh, next to the, to the place we decided to put in. Uh, it was next, next to our the primary crushing crushing facility building 
and also some parts of it are also stored on the same place. Uh, the assembling started um, after one week. Uh, firstly, the frames um, were built in, and after that, the container itself was placed on, on it. Uh, our mechanical team uh, do this excellent with a very short terms and this was the final result. Uh, we decided uh, to put only one of the letters at the side of the building and the sorter was ready to perform. Uh, this is the uh, right place uh, of sorter location. It's between uh, open pit mine and the processing plan. Uh, we decided to use um, a wheel based uh, screen for feeding the sorter. Uh, this screen was used only for uh, transportation of the material, but not for the sieving. And in addition, uh, wheel loader was used to. Um, to feed the material into this screen. Uh, the reasons to choose this place uh, was the flatness. It was uh, a flat surface asphalted and also it was next to the building uh, in which uh, we have uh, our necessity um, equipment and um, uh, concerning electricity, air supply and internet. The air was provided by local air uh, uh, compress, compressed air station by Atlas Copco um, compressors and uh, through the uh, two cubic meter air tank uh, and uh, two inch um, rubber, rubber hose, the air was provided to the sorting device. Internet connection was provided by our IT team specialists and uh, it allow it allows uh, uh, remote connection by team viewer with the COMEX engineer Roland Horak, uh, who was responsible uh, for, for the uh, main uh, it uh, we, we had a main support from him about the running and preparing of the configuration and some problem solving during the exploitation. Um, the operators training started at uh, the middle of April. At least three persons uh, were trained in uh, radiation safety, handling of the machine, machine loading and operation of the device. In this slide, you can see the general flow chart of the uh, different stages from the first beginning, uh, from the stockpile of the material uh, to the final product. And I will, I will focus now on the experimental work. Um, as, as you already know, um, we was using only the existing sensors uh, of the pilot and all the experiments was run uh, on with these sensors. Um, the main material for testing uh, was uh, ball mills scrap. This is the material uh, which is going out from the ball mills uh, in some different situations. Also, three different configuration settings was prepared by, by Roland Horak. Uh, uh, I have already mentioned uh, he's a project engineer in COMEX. And um, that's uh, three different configurations were tested uh, with different type of feeding manually and mechanically. Um, after finishing with this product, we chose a second product for testing. Um, uh, it was uh, 
product between secondary and tertiary crushing. Um, we chose it because uh, it ma it met all the requirements of the material and was suitable for sorting, uh, washed without any finest and with narrow size, uh, size range between 11 and 35 millimeters. Uh, but because of the quantity of uh, that second product, it was tested only by manual feeding. On this uh, uh, table, uh, uh, it is summarized all work with the sorter. Uh, as you can see, uh, two materials, ball, ball mill scrap and tertiary crushing feed. Um, tested by uh, three configurations uh, with high density rejection material, low density rejection and low density plus very high density rejection in meaning of metal pieces. Uh, also, it is um, written that we have two types of feeding with loader and manual feeding. Uh, as I say manual, I mean uh, uh, manual by um, feeding with buckets directly to the uh, vibration sieve at the beginning of the sorter. All the products were tested, or tested uh, sampled during the each step of uh, testing. Uh, and uh, the samples were provided to our research laboratory uh, uh, where it was uh, uh, crushed and pulverized for chemical analysis. It was anal they were analyzed for copper, iron and sulfur. Uh, it was very challenging work uh, and we made a, a a, a lot of efforts to achieve uh, some results and uh, good results, especially Roland with, with preparing of configurations, different type of co configuration, uh, which was very uh, time and power consuming for us and especially for him. Um, as uh, Jacek coach said in um, our our um, uh, morning uh, uh, part, um, trying to sort uh, our kind of uh, ores is very challenging and uh, our results are not uh, um, as we have expected. Um, the copper content of first product we tried to uh, sort, ball mill scrap is is about uh, 0.2 percent of copper and as you can see uh, the content is nearly the same at all products uh, which was sampled um, and some of the tests uh, you can see that um, rejecting for example rejecting uh, high density uh, a material we expected to, to have an enrichment in uh, rejected products and we have it but uh, it's not very much. Um, it can be uh, seen that it, it is uh, about the accuracy of the chemical analysis itself. But uh, uh, the differences between content in copper uh, was uh, uh, better can be seen in uh, a second product, tertiary crushing feed, because of the higher content of uh, copper and the other elements. There is nearly twice, uh, twice time uh, enrichment by copper and the other elements, iron and sulfur. Um, and some words, uh, I'd like to I'd like to say about the, this experimental work. Uh, as you have already know, um, our materials are very hard to be sorted on the base on the copper content, and we can see nearly same content of copper in both product and rejected material. Uh, we think that uh, the main presumable reason 
for this is the fine dissemination of the copper minerals into the uh, samples, into the ore. At the same time, a rejected materials shows a slight iron and sulfur enrichment uh, or uh, content increasing depending on the uh, calibration setting we used. But uh, iron and sulfur content correlates uh, uh, with the copper content uh, in all calibration setting. This means copper and iron minerals are very closely related and almost always in association. The correlation is better presented on second sample tests when the content of all above mentioned elements is nearly twice higher. And based on the, uh, based on the uh, experience and uh, uh, tests uh, provided here in uh, our company, uh, we can say that mobile sorter performs well. However, we think uh, um, that for our ores and uh, presumably maybe for all other copper porphyry ores, the sorter uh, performs better for iron and sulfur because of the higher contents. Copper content is uh, um, probably at the lower level detection limit of the XR Timetot and copper minerals are very fine disseminated in, um, and the good results are based uh, maybe on the mineral association uh, of the copper minerals with the other sulfide minerals. Uh, all these results are achieved uh, with the existing COMEX sensors uh, and due to the impossibility uh, impossibility to install the project sensor uh, the project sensor in Sarah Medet samples were sent to COMEX to be tested uh, with already installed XMINE sensors as well as uh, all appropriate, um, appropriate um, devices at COMEX laboratory. Uh, but uh, um, nevertheless, uh, uh, I'd like to uh, focus on one of the slides uh, uh, from the morning session from uh, uh, Jakub Koc uh, when he showed that our uh, material was tested in X-Mine sensors and a very good result was achieved uh, showing that uh, uh, most than 99% of the uh, copper, I suppose, as a metal was recovered in the product and uh, the rejected, the, the waste material is with copper content less than 0.01% uh, of copper, uh, which is very good result for me and um, it, it, it will be a very good base for the future works and um, I expect very good results uh, with analysis and sorting with the X-Mine sensors. Uh, at the end of this presentation, I'd like to uh, thanks a lot to the uh, project leaders from VTT, especially Jan Paso and Ero uh, Hieta for uh, their guidance and support, and also to Roland Horak, uh, for the remote support uh, on the sorter preparation and test, as well as uh, for the laboratory experiments at COMEX uh, laboratory. Also, many thanks for my you know, to my colleagues from SRL for their force and time. And uh, at, at the end, I'd um, like to thank a lot. Thanks a lot uh, 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 being a part uh, from this. Uh, uh, project and uh, especially to thank to Irina Pechova from Bulgarian Academy of Sciences uh, who introduced uh, uh, Horizon 2020 program to Aserao Medet. And thanks a lot of all my uh, uh, colleagues and partners uh, on the project. And, and that's all for me. Thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you very much, Ventislav. Uh, very good presentation uh, of what you've done around sorting. Uh, we have one question from the audience here regarding 
radiation safety. And I will actually address it first to you, Ventisislav, and then later to, to Jacek and Mikael also. Uh, so the question to you, Ventisislav, is what kind of administration did you have regarding radiation safety? Did you have to register the instrument with the authorities and how did this work? Um, at the beginning, uh, before the installation, um, we received the documentation from uh, uh, COMEX, um, a protocols from uh, measurement of radiation, and it shows that uh, the, the radiation outside outside the the, the X-ray source box is uh, next to the radiation outside the outside sorter. Uh, and it is absolutely safety to be um, next next to the sorter inside a container. And um, also uh, here in Nasrl, uh, we have a radiation responsible person. Uh, we have also uh, uh, many other X-ray sources, and uh, I'm not really sure. Um, if uh, these uh, machines are, are registered, but uh, uh, we informed our um, responsible agencies uh, uh, for them, that's for sure. And um, everything is uh, regulated, everything is fine. Yeah, thank you very much, Metzislav. Um, and I like to pose the similar question now to, to first Jacek and then Mikael. Uh, because one thing is how the machine is built to protect against radiation and then how it is supposed to be controlled while it's still in operation. If we start with, with you, Jacek. Do we have Jacek with us? I cannot hear you at the moment, so I pass the question over to Mikael instead, if you can explain radiation safety around the drill core scanner. Yes, thank you, Stefan. It is um, so in like I can describe the procedure. Um, first, the machines are are manda mandated by Swedish and European law to be uh, according to certain uh, levels and certain norms. And this is uh, uh, directly uh, in Sweden. It is directly underneath uh, an authority underneath the, the government. So it's it's uh, the law and no recommendation. And according to this, we measure uh, uh, the machine when manufacturing them. And then there is a uh, uh, the, uh, the company who, who does this uh, this um, measurement, which is or explore itself, because we are authorized by this authority to do this, we uh, then say how how well this performs and and what uh, what is the result of the the measurements. And um, this document is then passed on to uh, uh, the company who is who will be using the machine and uh, on on their premise, and also. The company that is um, going to use the machine will have to present their um, documentation from uh, from their radiation authority that they are uh, allowed to handle this type of uh, equipment by the respective uh, radiation authority within each country that the machine goes to. So, in in the case of uh, um, uh, Azarel, it is the Bulgarian uh, authorities and, and uh, the Greek authorities and the Cyprus authorities and so on. And then they, they present this, this information and we, are, we, are, we know that everything will be uh, handled according to the laws in respective country and, and also in a safe way. And then uh, the, the respective company will follow their internal procedures that they are mandated to follow to ensure that the machines um, behave and perform safely. So that that's in, in, I think was that an answer to your question, <laughs> Stefan? <laughs> now Stefan, you I can't hear you. You're muted, Stefan. 
<laughs> I should remember that. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, thank you uh, for that, Mikael. I think that was an answer enough. Uh, if Jacek has joined us or is available, you're welcome to comment on how the sorter is equipped to with radiation safety. I cannot see you for the moment. So we'll leave that question for later. Um, I don't have any more questions in the chat. Do we have anything from VTT that you'd like to comment or add, Janne? Otherwise, I think we can have a little bit longer break than originally was planned here. Uh, Stefan. Yes, Ronald. Can I give a short comment? Uh, we promised the stuff about critical raw materials, and I would like to add this that we actually can verify that the scanner can uh, find critical raw materials. We have some that we have verified from uh, field measurements together with the scanner. And where we can see that they're clearly, for example, in case of Cyprus, that they clearly correlate with the deposit. Others probably correlate with the uh, fault structures that are in the area, not necessarily only the deposit, through which they have been uh, seeping up. Yeah. Very good. Thank you for that, Ronald. Thank you. So, Janne, did you have a question or? Like to comment. Not, not really a question, but I just want to t thank the Asal Med Med uh, people for uh, for the work that they have uh, done during the project. And uh, we know that uh, the uh, COVID situation in Bulgaria was uh, quite difficult uh, during the winter winter time. And uh, but still, they could run the mine, and uh, you could uh, somehow organize the pilots and uh, do the work in the X mine project. So that was uh, really surprising and. Thank you a lot for that. Thank you, Janne. Uh, I forgotten to thank you about the possibility to combine um, both events, final event and industry workshop, and it was very really helpful helpful for us. Thank you. Thank you, Janne, for the excellent collaboration. Thank you. I, I would like to to add one one word with respect to this, uh, and this is because. Uh, because of the COVID situation, none, no people from or explore uh, could visit uh, Azarel during the onboarding and the commissioning of the drill core analyzers. So this has been done entirely by uh, the skilled um, uh, colleagues at Azarel Medet, and uh, it has been performing extremely well. So this is also something that is is very well performed and uh, we we had um, joint video sessions and we could do all the training over video and we could do remote um, uh, testing and and the upgrading of, of certain features and also uh, some of the service could be done remotely so it has been uh, also a very uh, a very real uh, testing of the capabilities of deploying this equipment remotely uh, in these type of conditions and a, a very true test, I would say, and, and really well performed. So thanks a lot for that. Uh, this is love events is love. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. OK, Janne, then uh, should we take the break now then? We have According to the schedule, we have a break until 14.30 Central um, European time. Yeah, we have uh, one more question uh, in the chat. Should we take that uh, before the oh, break? Yeah. If you have no, let's take it, yes. So the question says, uh, and I read out, directly from the chat. Do you think the drill core scanning could be useful for further development of the EU metallurgical model of the SRL deposit? And I think that one is directed to Desislav. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the, qu the question, uh, Ivan. 
um i think that uh, um this is a very a very good beginning of uh, creating uh, the geo geo metallurgical model at Acerreo because uh, uh, when we know um, the angle uh, of um, and um, all, all those information for for veins folds and um, everything that is uh, very important uh, for, for for the geometallurgy we 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 have uh, very very nice uh, tomography images and uh, and when we import uh, with the coordinates uh, those uh, information in in the in the in the model uh, we, we can create it and uh, this is um, a very useful part for uh, geometallurgy yes so yes I think that the uh, drill core scanning could be very useful for for the, for further further scientific scientific uh, researches. Yes. May I add some words? Can you hear me? Yes, you're welcome. Yes, Ventislav. Um, I think that at the moment is more correct to talk about uh, only for the model, but not for geometallurgical model. Uh, because uh, for geometallurgy, we need some more testing of um, uh, parameters concerning the processing plant and that the information uh, after, after, have, after we have this information will be uh, more correct to talk about geometallurgy, but I also think that uh, uh, this core analyzer will help for uh, faster and more detailed information about the, the state of the ore and mineralization and uh, copper grade. And uh, uh, we must do some more tests based on this uh, scanner results to be able to to talk about the geometallurgy mm. especially especially some tests for grindability and flotability of the ores yeah from a processing processing point of view <laughs> but uh, uh, yes now we are talking only for the for the model for the modeling and um, estimation and evaluation of the of the of the copper at the and the open pit as a whole and yes i think that uh, the scanner with help mm. will help yes yes okay thank you very much for those answers um now let's see here um okay we have a question here how do you see the interaction forecasting capacity from drill core analysis to sorting performance um, is that something you'd like to cover, this is Slav and Ventislav as well? The link between scanning of drill core and sorting performance. Maybe not on the spot. We'll keep that question for later then. Uh, we put it in the list of things to answer afterwards. Stefan, this is yeah, Mikkel yes, again from yes. Core Explorer. I just wanted to say something from, for, uh, if we have time, uh, uh, related to the previous question about geometrology, because uh, it can be interesting for the audience uh, to to know that we are now working on uh, on uh, building models, um, both uh, um, uh, together with. Uh, collaborating minds and we would also like to extend this this collaboration to SRL of course uh, uh, with uh, the uh, relation and and the, uh, the the better understanding of precisely these uh, these correlations between texture between uh, the the type of of uh, uh, crist uh, crystal uh, the sizes of crystals the type of minerals uh, and the grindability and the crushability and also if possible also the floatability so we have a uh, 
a uh, industrial PhD student now on board here at Orexplore, thanks to uh, collaboration with Swedish Mining Innovation and uh, Örebro University. And uh, he is working on the artificial intelligence aspect of this and finding these correlations. So this is a very interesting field uh, as we see it. And uh, this is of great interest to us to be able to help in, in this respect. So I think this can be interesting also for the interesting for the audience to understand. Yeah. And uh, Stefan? Yes. Uh, uh, a small answer to the to the last question. The analyzer helps us a lot for better understanding the elements and uh, understanding the the distribution of minerals in the core and um, knowing the elements and uh, understanding um, of the minerals in the deposit, their distribution, would make it easier to set parameters and uh, to calibrate uh, the, the sorting pilot. This, this, this is my answer to, to last question. Yeah. And, Steph and Stefan, also yeah. to, to add some words, uh, maybe we must uh, save uh, the answer uh, for this question uh, for a bit uh, later because we have not yet ready uh, with the um, with the testing of SRL materials with X mine sensor uh, with the sorter. Yeah. Okay. So we look forward to further developments and. X-Mine project is not finished with this meeting. We still have a yes. few months to go. Yes. And yes. So there's still room to report what happens in the last period here. Okay, I think we need to stop now. So we have a possibility for a short break. What do you say, Yannick? You're muted, Janne. Yeah. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Every now and then it happens. Uh, so we have the short break, and the next presentation uh, will be Lobby's agreement pilot summary, uh, followed by the uh, summaries of uh, the other other mines pilot and exploitation and impacts, and uh, then the, the expert panel discussion. But now we have the short break, and uh, we will continue at uh, 2:30. PMCET. Yeah, and while you have the break, take the chance to think about questions and put them in the chat and we'll see if we can answer them. Have a nice break. See you soon. Cheers.